Hey everyone, I'm building an entire first-person shooter game from scratch in the Gato engine and documenting the progress with these tutorials. In this video, we're creating a debug panel that we can toggle on and off and adding our current frames per second. In the future, we'll be able to add our own custom properties. The basic FPS controller project from episode one is available for free on GitHub. And if you would like to use the written version of this tutorial or download all of the source files, you can get access by joining my Patreon. Let's dive in. The node setup is fairly straightforward. First, we have a panel container node as a child node of our user interface node. I've named it debug panel. This node will act as the main container for our debug information and importantly, house both our UI theme and our debug script. I've made two changes in the inspector tab. First, set a minimum width of 200 pixels, then set the position to be offset by 10 pixels from the top and left of the screen our panel will be sitting in the top left corner. Next, we need a margin container node as a child. This node will create padding within our container and you don't need to make any changes for this one. Next, another child using a VBox container node. This node will lay out any children nodes in a vertical column on top of one another. This node will house label nodes, which will be where we place our debug text information. In the end, your node setup should look like this. UI elements in the Gato engine use a theme resource. These themes allow you to customize the visual properties of your UI. To create a theme for our debug panel, head back to our debug panel parent node. Under theme, you'll select new theme, which we want to save as a resource. I've put mine into a UI slash themes folder. With your theme selected, make sure you have the theme tab open at the bottom. This shows various control node UI elements and their current visual theme. By using the eyedropper, you can hover over the different elements and select them to edit them. Or you can add a type by using the plus button on the right. We're going to adjust our margin container theme first. Grab the eyedropper and select the margin container. You'll see some properties you can edit on the right. We want the dot C or constant tab where you'll find our margin settings. By clicking the plus button, these properties will be added to our theme options in the inspector. Here I've set my margins to 10 pixels. Next, we'll alter our panel container so that it has a slightly transparent background and border. Use the plus button on the right to add a panel container type. Then click the style box tab here and create a new style box flat. Save this as well so we can create a resource we can load later on. Here we can alter our background color, add borders, and create rounded corners. I'm using these settings here. For this episode, we're just focusing on bringing our current frames per second into our debug panel. In the next episode, we'll explore how to add our own properties from other scripts. On our debug panel node, attach a new script called debug. This will hold our debug logic and where we'll add new properties in the future. First, we'll add a new input map in project project settings input map called debug. I'm using the tilde key as the input. In our debug script, we want to be able to toggle our panel with our new input key. First, we'll set the panel to invisible when we start by setting visible to false in our ready function. Then we'll use the input function to check when we press our debug input, and when we do, we want to flip flop our visible value and already we can turn our panel off and on. The next goal is to create a function that we can call whenever we want to add a new property to our debug panel. We'll call this function add debug property with the parameters for our property title and the value of our property. First, we create a new variable called property. Then every time we run this function, we'll create a new label node within our property variable, then add the node as a child in our scene. We also need to add a reference to our vertical box container where we'll add new label nodes for our debug text called property container. A cool trick you can do is to right click your node and allow unique name, then drag it into your script. Using a unique name allows you to just put a percentage sign in front of the node name to reference it. Then use this reference in our function here, change the name of our new label node to match the title we give in our parameters, then set our property text to equal the name plus our value parameter. Let's test our function by adding this line here and running our scene. 
When you enable your debug panel, you should see your test property. To add frames per second as a debug property, we'll need a new string variable frames per second. Within our process function, we'll use this line to set our frames per second to equal one divided by the time between frames, which should give our approximate frames per second. The code in front says that we want to show our float with two decimal places at all times. Then we set our property text to equal our property name plus our frames per second. Because this is a string, using plus appends the values so that they just get added to the end of the first string. You could also use engine get frames per second, but this literally only updates the value every second. Additionally, if you have vsync on in your project settings, your frames per second will be capped at the refresh rate of your monitor. We'll change our add debug property function parameters to FPS for our title and frames per second for our value. Now you can run your test scene and you should see your current frames per second in your debug panel and be able to toggle the panel off and on. And one other thing we can add quickly is a way to not update our debug properties if our panel is not being shown because that's just a waste of resources. Simply add an if statement that says if our panel is visible, then run our update code. Alright guys, if this tutorial was helpful, consider it a like and subscribe to the channel as we're going to be covering a lot more. Thanks to all of my patrons who keep this series going. You too can get access to the written tutorials and the project source files by joining my Patreon. You can download everything there and you'll also get early access to my videos and sneak peeks at future tutorials. Thanks for watching and as always, keep creating.